everyone, Paul Angelo here. Welcome to another amazing video about sex. We're going to talk about how gay sex destroys our lives. And this is not just gay sex, sex in general. We're going to break this down into aspects of psychology that will help you understand what's the behind the scenes psychological principles that will help you see that sex is really very, very destructive. Also, we're going to talk about it from a perspective of just practical day-to-day -day ideas and advice coming from someone who has had a lot of sex, who has had a lot of lovers and uh, many experiences. And after 30 years of being gay, I'd like to offer you some personal opinion about how sex really destroys our lives. We're going to talk about no strings attached sex. What does it mean when you have NSA sex? We're going to connect sexuality with emotion when there's no emotional intent to connect to someone and you still have sex with that person, there's a price to pay. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to also separate the concept of sexuality into two parts. There's the search for sex. And as I'm sure you know already, it's, it's very time consuming. There's an enormous, enormous mountain of time that we spend searching for sex. And then there's the consumption of sex. And there's a lot of the stuff that we add to the consumption of sex, making it something that it really isn't. Because then when the end of that consumption comes, all of a sudden we back to square one, searching for the next one. So this whole cycle becomes very complex. And when you look at someone's life and they've had 20 years of something like that, I can assure you that that person is not going to be very successful in life. So we're going to talk about all of those things in the context of showing you that at the end of the day, if someone is really honest, and this is my personal opinion, if someone is really honest about all of it that we call sex, that the benefits of it and the disadvantages of it, when we look at that table and on the left side we've got the good stuff about sex and the bad stuff about sex on the right side, the bad stuff about sex wins at the end of our, you can say, life. So if we were to accumulate all of the sexual experiences, hundreds of partners, lovers, that the search for sex and the meaning that we give to sex and all the effort that comes into it is basically an extraordinary mountain of wasted time, wasted energy, and for many people, a state of delusion and denial. I had a breakthrough about sex many times. And one of the breakthroughs about sex happened when I realized that the sexuality that we have today, the impulses that are activated that lead us into the pursuit of sex, that these impulses are totally misaligned. That initially, when we look at human sexuality, that that energy to become naked with someone and perform certain acts inside of that sexual space, this is something modern. It never used to be that way. When we take a journey back in time a few thousand years ago, first of all, the hygiene was not there. So people were not having sex the way that we are having sex today. There was no hygiene. Most people were dirty. You would not even want to kiss someone because their breath would smell, let alone go to the other places and do something more. So the ways that we look at sex today has been totally commercialized, has been to totally turned into this materialistic pursuit of body parts inside of someone's, uh, uh, inside of someone's body. And we look at sex in a way that is radically, radically different and also radically dysfunctional. The ways that we want to touch each other today was never the ways that we used to touch each other. And the whole energy and impulses, biological impulses that are right now, today in modern world, calibrated to be targeted towards one person in terms of sexual specificity and sexual compatibility, none of that ever has taken place in humanity. Instead, that desire for pleasure that we seek in terms of expressing our sexual intentions and desires, that used to be inside of a collective, group-like, orgiastic, tribal-like community. Uh, and the, the desire to have sex with someone 
was translated into the desire to be inside of a group setting with multiple people. So the way sex used to be translated into a pleasurable experience was that we, we felt that pleasure to the whole tribe, to the whole group. And then at different times of the year, when the sexual arousal was heightened, and usually that's in the spring and in the fall, and men also have biological sexual clock, just like women have periods, men also have biological clocks. At those times, the sexual activity would have been heightened and all of a sudden the arousal would have been so much so that the hygiene, uh, the, the disadvantages from not having hygiene would no longer be an obstacle. People would, would enter into the consumption of sexuality in basically a very short uh, amount of time. It's not like, the sexual activity was taking uh, an hour or two hours. It was not recreational at all. So I think that's a way, a good way to sum up. Today, sex is recreational. It takes away from um, the relatedness that's supposed to happen. So when we look at our when we look at our arousal, everything happens out of the arousal of sexuality, as opposed to out of the arousal of relatedness because sex has become something that is commercialized, something that has been turned into something recreational. Sexuality is no longer an experience of closeness and reproduction, is an experience of certain mechanical ideas that you're gonna do this to me, I'm gonna do this to you, basically a transaction. So on that level, sex will always destroy our lives, no matter how we look at it, no matter from which perspective you try to kind of dissect and find the pleasure in it and justify it and rationalize it. Most of the sexual acts are highly dysfunctional. So let's talk about these. The first one that's very common is the no strings attached sex. And I'm sure you've had a lot of that. I've had a lot of that when I was in my 20s and early 30s. I had no idea how it works and I, I acted out my sexual impulses without knowing what I was really doing. So when you look at sexual activity that is disconnected from an emotional intention to connect with someone, we are all of a sudden participating in a very primitive, tribalistic, regressive, and animalistic behavior that in a modern world will not add any value to our lives. There's no value. We might, you know, you can argue, yeah, it feels good, uh, but when it ends, what do you do? You go back to search for another one. And then you repeat this, search for another one, another one. And if there is no emotional intent, it becomes an empty activity teaching us that interactions with human beings can be devoid of an emotional intent. And so then making friends is very difficult, falling in love is very difficult. We end up bumping against other men physically in sexual activity, yet we can't connect. And so sex in its own way, without the intent for an emotional connection, never has the ability to connect us to other people. And so every time you have it, it destroys your life because it's a lot of time that's wasted for pursuing of something that is completely meaningless, completely devoid of emotion. It's basically like two animals coming together, having their thing, and then then going apart again, and none of their lives change, their ideas don't change, the way they feel about themselves don't change, their thoughts don't change, their habits don't change, and that behavior will be repeated over and over without having any impact on the person's life. And so the way to understand how sex destroys our lives is when sex is outside of our lives, when sex is outside of the perimeters that make life better or, or easier or more meaningful or more emotional. When we talk about sexual activity without an emotional content or without an emotional intention, what is really happening? We are inside of an experience that is psychologically dysfunctional, that is psychologically unhealthy. What this means is that when you are naked in front of another human being and if you're shutting down your emotional intentions, it means that you are training yourself to suppress your emotional tentacles. 
that every human being has in order to connect to other people. So as an example, if you have 10 sexual experiences across one month, and some people do that, um, and in each time it's no, no strings attached sex, then the following month, let's say that you meet someone that you want to connect with and fall in love with, and uh, in sexuality you feel really, you, you feel really uh, uh, matched or compatible, you will still not be able to connect emotionally because previously your tentacles were shut down by the previous experiences and habits of emotional suppression. Most people think that, oh, I can just fuck around for five years and then the sixth year I'm going to fall in love. It can't happen because the emotional tentacles, which is a human a natural humane ability to connect to others that has been suppressed by all these experiences of no strings attached sex where you are teaching yourself that it's okay to fuck someone and leave and walk away and never care about that person. When you do it over and over, eventually you become a narcissist or you turn yourself into um, uh, what's called learned narcissism or learned sociopathy, even in some cases psychopathy because the experiences are so devoid of the human empathy and emotional mechanism that we essentially become like these concrete blocks of stone where we can do certain things, but there's no glue there anymore. There is no substance to connect through with other people. And that's what no strings attached sex does to a lot of men. At this time, it is important to talk about the emotional intention that's supposed to be inside of sexuality. If it's not there, we are training ourselves to be around other people without emotional exchange. And this is how sex often destroys our lives because we are training ourselves to be unable to connect emotionally to other men. And what it does is it forces us to re-emphasize sex as the sexual, compat sexual compatibility as the main ingredient of a healthy connection. And that is only possible in the absence of emotional availability. One of the things that you will notice in your pursuit of relationships, sex, and men is that when you are emotionally connected to another man, your sexual desire to, to be with him sexually goes down. The more emotion is activated, the less sexual impulsivity is going on or the less sexual arousal is there. Because all of it is energy. If you exchange your energy with another human through emotion, then the sexual connection is not as necessary as much of it as people expect when they have no emotion at all. So the, the emotional intention is incredibly, incredibly important. I'd like for you to imagine that as a human being, you walk around with these invisible tentacles that are protruding out of your body in every direction. And these invisible tentacles are these energetic um, receptors and the uh, antennas that emit emotion and also receive emotion from other people on an energetic level. If you are close with another person, really close together, naked, and you are engaging in a sexual activity, but you choose to not to express emotional intention with this person, guess what happens? These antennas, these invisible emotional tentacles, they eventually get smaller, smaller, and smaller until you have a complete inability to connect emotionally to other men because you suppressed it, because you had so much sex going on that uh, the emotional aspect of your personal development never took place or that the tentacles at some moment in your life they were protruding in every direction it was very easy for you to connect to everyone but because of the no strings attached sex that was going on for many months or many years they, it almost like took away or cut off your emotional tentacles that are necessary for healthy relationships so when two men are together really close you want to listen and act out your emotional energies through your through these, these these antennas of emotional intention that every human being has including man 
including gay men, including successful, including powerful and very strong men. That masculinity is not an excuse to cut off your emotional tentacles, antennas. In fact, your emotional antennas have to be inside of a sexual activity in order for you to have the beautiful life that you want. Everything in our lives, every joy, every beautiful experience, every magical moment has an aspect of emotion inside of it. And so through sex, we are actually cutting off that emotional expression because when we enter into sexuality, we are disconnecting that emotional component a lot of times. In fact, most of the times with the no strings attached sex and it kills us. It destroys us because it kills those tentacles that are so necessary in every area of life. Another situation that we want to look at is the, the, the two different states. There's the state of arousal and then there's the state of relatedness. We self-destruct with sexuality when we make choices about our partners from the state of arousal, from the state of sexual arousal, as opposed to from the state of, of from the, the arousal of relatedness. So there are two kinds of pleasures you can experience with other people. You can experience the sexual pleasure but also you can experience the pleasure of relatedness. It's actually quite pleasurable to engage another person and have a commonality, have a, a similar ideas about life, have similar direction in life. It feels very pleasurable because we are validated and we feel connected, assuming those emotional tentacles and antennas are active. Now, the other side of this story or the, this situation is the arousal from sexuality. And notice that when we act out from the arousal, from the sexual arousal state, we don't care about the person's personality. We don't care about the person's family. We don't care about the person's past. We don't care about the person's um, education. And a lot of the traits that actually are important to take into account when we plan our personal life, our social life, our life in general. So what happens is that if we behave, if we choose our partners out of the state of arousal, always we make a poor choice in every single case. And guess what? That's how most men choose their partners. They're in a state of arousal and then they say yes. And they stay in a dysfunctional relationship for many, many years. Then they come back from that never having really learned any lessons outside of the simple one, which is when you choose your lover, choose out of a state of relatedness, out of a state of, of life's direction and commonality of direction, not out of a state of arousal. And many lives are destroyed because of it. There's so many men that are so powerful, intel, intelligent, uh, they have so much potential, but they're with the wrong kind of partners. Their life's journey can never be manifested the way it was supposed to be manifested. Their life's journey was supposed to be about some kind of innovation and change and, and, and ridiculous growth and taking risks and being with people where you can make something happen. But none of that is possible when we operate out of the state of arousal. So one of the biggest transformations you can have in your sexual life is to operate, when you choose lovers and friends, operate out of a state of relatedness, not out of the state of arousal. It will always set you back. Now, let's talk about sexual completion because understanding sexual completion and how it relates to sexual impulses is important because there is a time in your life where all the rules I'm talking about no longer apply. There's a moment in our lives where we are so chaotic in our sexual energies, in our exploration, that none of these rules that I just shared with you apply. But we're supposed to come out of that state, out of that, that state of sexual exploration, and then enter into the place where these rules do apply, and which is how we make our lives successful with relationships, with sex, and with marriage. And so the sexual completion stage is a state of your sexual exploration 
that gives you the permission to act it all out. You want orgies? Get go and have participate in orgies. Three ways, multiple partners, bathhouses, sex in public, lots of partners. It's all great and it's necessary for your all self um, actualization, your self perception, your self discovery, your coming into terms with how your body feels, um, what your sexual needs are. But that moment eventually ends. And after you have had all that sex, you then are able to enter into the state of relatedness. And so that's the big, big lesson here, that if we don't have that sexual completion, if you don't have sex and a lot of it with a lot of different people in a lot of different ways, we have difficulty entering into that state of relatedness because there's something that's unfinished, this unfinished business about all the crazy sex you always fantasize about, you always dreamt about, you always thought that you could have it in a marriage, but because you never made it happen, it's this big unknown, it's this big mystery, and it's very captivating, but it's mostly irrational. And that's why you want to play it out as fast in your life as possible so you don't bring it and contaminate your relationships with it because these irrational fantasies are never going to create stability they're never going to create connection and so you need to take care of that prior to entering into stable relationships and those men that want to enter into stable relationships but they've never had all that sex they won't be able to enter into a stable relationship. They will destabilize it with sex, either by not um, wanting to connect because that person is not sexually compatible, or by simply uh, opening up the relationship at a certain time when there's trust, or just seeking out sexual exploration and turning your head at moments when you're supposed to be focusing on your lover. So if we are not sexually completed, all these moments inside of a relationship that's supposed to be about the relationship, they can never take place because you're distracted sexually. You're distracted on an impulse biological, physiological level. The glue is not enough. You are unfinished on a psychological level and the sexual impulses are so strong that they destabilize relationships that otherwise would have taken off into marriage, into that together forever that everyone wants. So to summarize this idea here, sexual completion is necessary. Go out there, have as much sex as possible so that later when your lover changes his body because he gains some weight or loses weight or gets older or develops wrinkles, you don't care about any of that anymore because you've already had so much sex, you've tasted all of it. Now you're connecting emotional intent to the looks of your lover, to who he is, who he is becoming and that is enough for you to actually carry you forward forever. So in my relationship with Frank, there were many times he lost weight, he gained weight, he had some wrinkles in this area, that area, bad breath, all kinds of hygiene elements, but it's it's none it's 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 not relevant anymore because I've had all that sex with so many partners. Frank to me is an embodiment of love, a container of commitment. I am committed to him. I'm there for the long haul. I don't care whether we are compatible sexually or not because I've had thousands of experiences of compatible sexual experiences that never really meant anything, never brought value to me. So I, I know that it's not something to look for anymore. It just is what it is. And the only meaning, the only pleasure that comes from the sexual exchange with Frank is connected to that wholeness of us together. It's not just the sex, it's not just the nudity, it's the emotion, it's our relatedness, it's our plans for the future, it's the goals, even the cars that we drive, the way we live, the apartments that we live, all of it is coming together. Sex is no longer an ingredient that decides whether we go forward or not. And that is, my friends, what I hope that you are able to produce in your relationships where sex is um, its not a substance of anything anymore. Sex is something that you express throughout your 20s or early 30s. You get it all out of your system and you are ready to enter into relatedness with another man. 
So now let's summarize some of these points and let's reach a conclusion with a framework or an idea to help you look at sexuality in a powerful way. So we talked in this video at the beginning about the fact that when we sum up all the sexual activities throughout our life and we organize them into all the good stuff that happened because of them and all the bad stuff that happened because of it, because of all the sexual activities, the bad stuff column is much larger. So we want to be honest and self-reflective enough to realize that sex really has a big potency in terms of destroying our lives, making us regress in our pursuits of happiness, fulfillment, and success. Secondly, we talked about the no strings attached sexual activity that does not have the intention for emotional connection. It's very dangerous. It destroys our emotional antennas so that later when we really are ready and want to connect to someone, we struggle because the emotional antennas are not activated. They have been shut down by the ongoing exposure to, to sexuality with other men without any emotional connection. Then we talked about the perpetual state of sexual arousal versus the arousal for relatedness. So there are two states, state of arousal, state of sexual arousal, and state of arousal towards relatedness. And if we want to succeed in relationships, we want to act out the choices of partners from the state of relatedness, not the state of arousal. What happens is right now is that all the grinders, all the hookup places, all the sex on TV, and all the overemphasis on beauty causes men to be sexually aroused most of the time. They walk around in a perpetual state of sexual arousal, out of which they want to make choices for partners. You don't want to do that. Most, in most cases like that, it's going to lead towards choosing someone that does not have the character to give you stability and emotional sta safety in a relationship. We also talked about sexual completion, a very important component in sexual health. The faster, the sooner you get your sexual completion under the belt, the more stable relationships you can have throughout your life. An analogy I can give you to illustrate this was a situation, is a situation, imagine you are walking with your lover down on a sidewalk and a beautiful man walks in front of you, passes you, and you end up having this, this immediate desire to turn around and look at him. That often happens when we're sexually not completed, where the emotional impulses are so potent they take over us. And imagine another guy goes to a bathhouse and he brings a book and he can read a book in a bathhouse. Now, obviously I'm exaggerating this, but it's a situation that illustrates the fact that our sexual impulses, they do quiet down. They do diminish with more and more sex. And we want that, we want to accomplish that through sexual completion so that later our lover feels safe with us because he notices that we focus on him all of your attention. That's very important because otherwise there will be all kinds of complexity showing up, there will be mistrust, monogamy will be difficult, and the connection will be difficult. So we want to enter into stability, into marriage, having had that completion of sexuality. Another important idea to add to this list that is a little bit more advanced but important to talk about before we end this video is the concept of calibrated attraction. When you have calibrated attraction, you are mostly attracted to men who reciprocate your attraction. So it's very easy to fall in love, it's very easy to find someone because you are going after men who can reciprocate your attraction. So in that situation, there's not a lot of time waste, you're not being distracted for many years because you, so you are uh, 45 years old and you are with 22 year old or 27 year old, which is, happens a lot of times with men. So basically what this means is that your attraction sends you to men who can provide you with stable relationships and who also are attracted back to you. How do we do that? And why is this such a huge deal and why did I decide to bring this into this discussion? A lot of times, sex destroys our lives when we perpetually seek lovers who exhibit an expression of your attraction that is only one-sided. And they 
pretend they are attracted to you. They tell you they are attracted to you, but they're not. And you kind of sense it, but you're not willing to go there because you don't want to lose them. But in reality, it's only a one-sided relationship. And we want to avoid it because we don't want to spend many, many years in that relationship and have, in essence, sex destroy our lives by the virtue of occupying our attention with the wrong person for so many years. How do we fix it? It's very simple. Number one, we want to understand that attraction is a, is a malleable energy, that it changes over time. It's not static, as people say. Whatever attract, whoever you were attracted to in your 20s, you're supposed to be attracted to someone different in your 30s and different in your 40s and different in your 50s and different in your 60s. How does it happen? It's all about emotion. Emotion is the magic in relationships, not only in love, but also in sexuality and attraction. When you're around a man that let's say that you are half attracted to, just to illustrate this example, let's say you're in front of a guy you're half attracted to. You're not really sure yet, but you have an amazing emotional experience with him. You feel really good and happy all of a sudden as opposed to being half attracted to him, you are 80% attracted to him. And the sexual arousal comes alive, you have sex and you feel really good. And so that's how our attraction is calibrated so that we eventually are attracted to men that we can have. Because with those men, we created an emotional connection that worked both ways. Emotional connections usually work both ways. They're very rare that happens only one side to one side. But we want to be we want to have that intention that's felt by both people. So that is how you calibrate your attraction. The more emotional connection you have embedded into a sexual activity, the more you feel. And based on that feeling, your body does the calibration on its own to align you with the emotion and the sex to target the person that can be reciprocal in their attraction towards you. And this is very important because, I, again, I see this all the time. Men are chasing other men that have no good character for stability, that have no ability to provide, to provide emotion, but they keep chasing them and their lives keep regressing because of it. So to avoid it, you want to be emotionally active every time you have sex with another person so that you're calibrating your sexual compatibility equation with the emotion, the person that you're with. And that is, my friends, how you can prevent sex from destroying your life. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope that these ideas are not um, overwhelming you. Sexuality is not what we, not really what we think it is. Most of the people that taught us about sexuality, first of all, they've never had a lot of sex themselves. They come from a position of morality that is disconnected from physiology and understanding of biology. Uh, the people that teach us about sex oftentimes have very conflicted relationships or are single. So unfortunately, most of the advice, if not all of the advice about sex comes from people that we should never listen to. We should never listen to. At the end of the day, sex is an important part of psychological development. But in the context of a gay lifestyle, we don't want to live that gay lifestyle through sex. We want to live it through relatedness, through relatedness. And we want to compartmentalize sex in a way that it does not intercept our life's journey, my friends. So I hope this has been useful for you. For more ideas about sexuality, for more ideas about gay life and how to be successful as a gay man, please visit my blog at paulangelo.com forward slash blog. And those of you who are ready for an immediate transformation of your personal life, please come to the Big Gay Family social program website at biggayfamily.com. So thanks for watching. Until we talk in the next video, as always, my friends, go out there, think big, stay present, and be a leader in your life today. Signing off, talk to you soon.